calculate the magnetic field inside and outside a solenoid using Ampere's law. So let's begin by stating Ampere's law here. So Ampere's law. states that if we have a, an Amperian loop, take any region of space, for example, here we don't really show the, so this is, need not be circular. So this is any arbitrary shaped uh, curve, which forms a, complete loop. So if you call this the Amperian loop, it's given a sense of direction. And let's say this is going counterclockwise. So that's the Amperian loop. And Ampere slot tells that calculate the dot product of the magnetic field each tiny element dl of the law, the scalar product between the magnetic field at that point due to any current carrying wire inside the loop or going out of it. And do it all over the Zamperian loop and it will be exactly equal to how many currents are going through the loop, only the ones that are crossing. So there is a surface enclosed by the loop and any current that is crossing that surface area. You not. So there could be many currents. So this is I1 plus I2 plus so on. When we say current crossing the surface, it could be positive or negative. How do we decide the sense of positive and negative uh, direction? We first say that if it is, so if the Amperian loop is clockwise, so let's, so let's uh, say the, so this is count clockwise. So, so if the Amperian loop is counterclockwise, then current I is positive coming out of the, if the current is coming out of the page, then it is positive. And it is negative if it's going into the page. So that'll be our uh, notation in general. Uh, you can use the right hand rule again. Uh, the fingers are pointing in the direction of the Amperian loop then the thumb gives you the direction of positive uh, current in the notation of uh, Ampere's law. With that as the statement of Ampere's law, let's uh, see the case of a uh, solenoid. So solenoid has a has a coil. Let's uh, represent the coils using this points. I'll show the currents coming in and out. These should be imagined to be very close to each other. And let's say that's your other side of the card. Three, four, five, six, I'm sorry. They're extending all the way to infinity on both ends. And they're coming out of the page on the left side. So these are all cylindrical circular coils uh, so that it forms a coil as a, the form of cylinder. Mm -hmm. And the current is going into the page on the right side. Okay. So this should be imagined as forming a cylinder here like this. Each of this is a circular wire. <coughs> The magnetic field lines uh, will be due to this uh, solenoid will be pointing upward everywhere. 
So let me show that like this. So few of the lines at least. So it's just three lines, let's say. And that's magnetic field. By symmetry, so symmetry requires or one argues that the magnetic field is along the axis, which is what I've shown already. Let's say that's the z hat uh, direction. So it's z hat direction is the axis. And there is a magnetic field magnitude, which we assume is only in the radial direction. It depends only on the radial distance, which is perpendicular to the direction of axis. So there are two assumptions here. First is that it is in the axial direction is axial and its magnitude does not depend on any other coordinates other than the distance from the center of the axis. The second assumption we'll make is that the magnetic field all the way, the magnitude of the magnetic field all the way at infinity is exactly equal to zero. So if you go at r equal to infinity, very far away magnetic is a uh, zero. <clears throat> okay, so that let's have some. So let's have a first loop we will consider is, is this. So that's the first loop. The second loop would be crossing the and the third loop can be completely outside. That's the three loops we will have. That's loop one. That's going to be loop two. And that will be loop three. <clears throat> Let me have the points uh, here as A, B, C, D, D, e, and F. So let's begin with loop one. It's counterclockwise direction as the direction of the loop. So that's the direction of the loop. Magnetic field on side B is in the direction of the current and the magnetic field on side A is, uh, is not in the direction of current, in the direction of the loop and magnetic field is opposite to the direction of the loop on site uh, A. <clears throat> so Amperian loop on site B is B dotted with DL. It is magnetic field at position RB, which I'll just call it RB times length L of the wire. So this is each one is length L, let's say. And on point A, it since it is going in the opposite direction, it will be A times L. The other two sides of the loop do not contribute zero because uh, the direction of the loop is perpendicular to the magnetic field there and the scalar product V dot DL contributes nothing in that case. Amperian, Ampere's law tells us that for this loop one, the right-hand side of Ampere's law is equal to the total current passing through this loop. In loop one, there is no current passing through this loop because this is a circular wire, it comes in and goes, but this loop is placed inside, completely inside that, that solenoid. So that's equal to zero. L can be factored out and this implies that the magnetic field anywhere inside, since A and B were arbitrary points, so the A is exactly equal to B, B. This implies that magnetic field is uniform in size. Is uniform inside the solenoid. <laughs> That's the first conclusion. Now let's go to loop two. Same 
argument. Uh, we still have the direction of the loop. Let's choose it to be counterclockwise. It comes down here. We still say the magnetic field is pointing upward by symmetry because this is having cylindrical symmetry. The solenoid has cylindrical symmetry everywhere outside. It should be presumed that it is in the in the z direction. And again, uh, the left side will have the same idea. So it is B D L minus of B C of L. <clears throat> And that's equal to whatever current uh, is going through the through this loop two. As how many current uh, the number of currents is given by if number of den number density of the wires is n. It is n times i. Each wire has current i. N is number of turns of wires per unit length. So we are to multiply by length L also. Remember N is number of turns in the wire divided by length L. <clears throat> so the total number of wires will be L multiplied by N and each wire has current I. So that's the total current. Going. But all these currents are going into the loop we said that currents will be, if it is, if the loop is counterclockwise, then current is positive when it is coming out of the boat. But these currents are going into the boat, so that's minus of that. That's what minus. <clears throat> L cancels out, so we have B D. <clears throat> uh, let me write this as B C minus B D. So it's B C minus BD is equal to N times I. That is also mu naught in the Ampere's law, so I should write that also. So it's mu naught and this is mu naught. So that's the conclusion we can have from loop two, but still we don't know what is BD. BD is the magnetic field outside the solenoid. So let's uh, argue how much is that here. So for that, we go to loop three, which can be placed on the right side also here. In loop three, again, we have the same argument in the left-hand side, uh, a counterclockwise loop. And we say it is B E L minus B F L is equal to there is no currents going through the loop, so that's equal to zero. So we conclude B E is equal to B F. But then I could have chosen my side F to be anywhere to the left, I can take it extended all the way to infinity. And then if F is at infinity, then BF is equal to zero. That implies that B is equal to zero. That means also BD is equal to zero. Right? So all that implies the magnetic field is zero outside the solenoid. So the point is magnetic field is uniform outside. That's one conclusion. And we have uh, argued in the beginning that magnetic field should be zero all the way to infinity. So together magnetic field should be zero outside the solenoid. Together that means B, of B at point D should be zero. So that also implies that BD should be zero. And together from the conclusion loop two, we know that BC is equal to mu naught IN. So together, all three conclusions together tells us that the magnetic field is 
c hat times mu naught and i inside the loop inside the solenoid and it is zero outside so that's the result let me stop sharing and stop the recording